All right, Sweet Tooth is the latest comic to TV show adaptation over at Netflix. And I have to say, I have been disappointed with a lot of their previous comic to TV show adaptations like Lock and Key, and most recently, Jupiter's Legacy, which got canceled after just one season very soon after the first season just came out. So Netflix's track record is very mixed at best. Now, Sweet Tooth is probably one of the best indie comics of the last decade. It is so good. It is written by Canadian comic book writer Jeff Lemire, and it is about a, a little boy named Gus, who is a human-animal hybrid, and he teams up with this older guy named DeJeppard, and they travel this post-apocalyptic landscape together to try and sort of solve this mystery behind this virus and see how the world will go on. Now, I have covered the entire comic series on my channel, so if you're curious to see how the comic book story goes down, check out my playlist on Sweet Tooth. Now, if you are someone that has not read the source material, I think the Sweet Tooth TV show does a pretty good job for that particular kind of viewer. If you don't know the source material, this is a very fun, entertaining, engaging mystery of a story. And the cinematography is great, some of the actors are pretty good, so there is a lot to enjoy here, and I think you will highly enjoy the show. Now, if you are someone, though, that has read the comic series, you may have a hard time getting past some of the changes and the different feel of the show. Now, in this review, I'm going to be coming at it from the perspective of someone that has read the comic, so I'm going to be leaning more towards that. And there's going to be some minor spoilers, but nothing too major. But um, from the perspective of someone that has read the comic, it's a little disappointing in some ways. So, firstly, the tone of the show. The comic is very dark and intense and gritty and grimy, and um, it can be a little bit depressing at times, whereas the TV show really kind of lightens up the mood. It's the kind of show that a parent can watch with their kid and have a good time, whereas if it really stayed true to the comic, it might be a little bit darker, a little bit more adult-oriented. But um, I can't fully blame Netflix for sanitizing the show for a more mainstream audience, but I totally get why some comic fans may be a little bit disappointed with the direction. Other than the tonal shift, the comic is making a few other changes as well. Jeopard and Gus go on a different kind of journey. They meet new characters, different characters. Various characters are also changed. Gus's mom has a significantly different story within the TV show. The mystery behind the virus is still not revealed fully, but we do get some answers pretty early on in the TV show, which don't come until later in the comic. And I think that's maybe a good idea. It's good to explain a little bit of some stuff to people. We also see a lot more of the pre-plague times and early plague times, which we don't see that much of in the comics, so that was nice. I would say the first TV show covered roughly the first trade paperback of the comic and maybe stole a few plot lines from some of the later volumes. Um, I would put the accuracy or faithfulness to the comic at about 60%, so that's not bad. It's not amazing, though. There's definitely a lot more changes than I would like, but still not too bad. Let's dive into some of the cast and characters now. James Brolin plays the voice of the narrator, and I honestly love his smooth voice within the TV show. There's no narrator in the comic, but it's totally fine. It works in the show, and I actually really liked its use. Gus, played by actor Christian Convery, the little kid actor, is totally capable in the role. He's way cuter than the comic book version of Gus, but it's totally fine. Uh, I'm liking him. Now, Jeopard. I'm slightly disappointed because, you know, I'm Canadian and Jeff Lemire is Canadian. And in the comic, Jeopard is a white guy that plays hockey. And now we have an African-American actor that plays football. So I have that vision of Jeopard so ingrained in my mind. It definitely is a real shift to have this, you know, black actor playing the role. But, if I move past that, I do have to say, Nonzo Anozi makes a very good Jeopard. 
he really embodies the spirit of the character in the comic. So even though I'm a little apprehensive with the change, I am okay with it. Now, one disappointment is the character of Jimmy Jacobs. Now, Jimmy is someone that comes in near the end of the comic book series and plays a pivotal part. Well, when he gets introduced into season one, he is used for one scene, one scene, and he is kind of thrown away afterwards. So he is an example of something that if you have not read the comic and you're watching the TV show, you don't think much of the scene. You're like, whatever. But if you have read the comic and you're watching this scene with Jimmy, you're like, what? That's it? That's all we get of Jimmy and he's gone now? It can be very disappointing. Will Forte plays Gus's dad in the show, and I thought he was great. I absolutely love Will Forte. I wanted more of him in the show, but what we did get of him was uh, pretty fantastic. Abbott, the main villain, perfectly mirrors his comic book counterpart. I approve, and I like the way he is interpreted in the show. Dr. Singh also perfectly mirrors his comic book counterpart. I approve of the casting there. We got a much more of a fleshing out of his character in the show seeing some of his life with his wife, which I did enjoy. Wendy, the hybrid pig girl, I approve. Very cute. I like the look they went for with her. Bobby the groundhog, though. <laughs> the groundhog hybrid, he looked messed up. I would have preferred some sort of creative makeup. Instead, we got this monstrous CGI character that looks like he's right out of Alvin and the Chipmunks, which is just, I thought, a bad choice. Now, this next character I'm going to talk about, in the show she's named Bear, and a little bit of a spoiler, I guess, is that she is Becky from the comic. And her origin is changed drastically from the comic. In the comic, she was a prostitute, but Netflix is sanitizing the show, so that's gone away completely. And now Becky is the leader of the animal armies, and the animal armies in the comic were like these cultists that worshipped hybrids. Well, the show kind of follows that, but instead makes the animal armies teenagers that are into animal cosplay and are into playing weird video games or something. The whole thing just seemed really silly. It just seemed like a total misstep with these animal army kids and whatever they were going with there. So that was not great. All right. So in conclusion, I think this was a very solid season one. If you haven't read the source material, I think you will absolutely love this show. And if you have read the source material, you gotta fight and try and suppress your thoughts of the comic so that you can uh, roll with it and enjoy the show. I'm gonna give season one an 8 out of 10, and I think the changes are what's stopping me from giving this a 9 or 9.5, making it a really perfect show, but still, very solid season one, very excited for season two really want to see the rest of this great story from Jeff Lemire adapted. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out my coverage of the Sweet Tooth comic so you can see why I love that series so much and why some of the changes I have a little bit of trouble with.